Hi everyone, this is Margie Gaddard. Welcome to the unboxing of my XP Pen Artist 22E Pen Tablet Monitor. This is so exciting for me. I've been waiting to have the opportunity to use a pen tablet so I can draw my illustrations directly on the monitor. start working on my projects. I'm going to test all the drawing. I'm going to put the glove on, get the pins out, and I'm ready to draw. Thank you. Hi. I'm going to show you the pressure sensitivity of my new XP pen tablet. I'm taking the stylus and I'm just going to draw kind of a regular size line. And as I go across the page. I can get smaller all the way back down to a very thin line. Panel for the pen tablet. It's very important that you set this up correctly. When you're installing the driver, very important that you select this check mark. Supports digital ink. That way you'll get your pressure sensitivity set up correctly. You'll notice that you'll be able to test the pressure sensitivity and you can set different settings within these colors. So you've got your red, green, and blue. And then you can clear that and start over again. You can work with this different type of sensitivity levels as well or just leave it at a setting that you like. Um, you also have the buttons that you want to make sure you understand how these are set up. The first button is the barrel button one, and the uh, that's the name of that button. Then that gives you the pen eraser tool toggle. Of course, there's express keys as well, which I'll show you those in a minute. And then how you want to set up your dual monitors goes back to brush and this one is nice because if I'm zoomed in which I'm still learning I'm sorry I haven't learned these yet if I'm zoomed way in and I want to toggle with uh, the hand tool that's the third one up then I can move grab my uh, image that's enlarged and, zo and you know manipulate the view by dragging it. Let's draw something that's recognizable. Might zoom out a little bit more with the keyboard shortcut. Control or Command minus or dash. And so if I wanted to start drawing a, a person, notice I've got that option just as if I'm on the paper now. Drawing on my a uh, drawing um, tablet that's paper but I'm drawing on the monitor which is fantastic so all the good things we've learned about drawing uh, you know working with the face shape getting those blocked in just so easy to draw with and of course again I'm just using kind of a basic brush uh, you know that the more you work with these brushes, you can customize as I showed you. Uh, you can manipulate as you draw. So it's very easy to uh, get the shapes blocked in, ready for you to draw. And then it's just a matter of adding the details. Now, the fantastic thing about Photoshop is you know we've got the wonderful layers that will allow us to uh, manipulate and maybe start adding some color if we want to. And 
then that'll be on a different layer aside from our basic. And here's where you may want to enlarge the brush and check, you know, your sensitivity. You can turn off that bottom layer and start looking at the color techniques that you have going on. So it's just so similar to working with paper. And so now I'm going to add some hair. So let's go find an interesting color of hair. I'm just moving around in the color picker. Maybe I want her hair to be lighter. Having fun with finding a color. And then now I can just free flow that hair. Now remember that's on its own layer. So I'm having fun on top of this one. I might turn that one off now. And I can add those basics of hair. I'm doing kind of a little caricature fun type funny thing. Go in. Go back and get some of that color I like again with my eyedropper tool and I can put that new color in my swatches too if I want to save it so she's a very happy camper because she is part of the demo for the new Wacom tablet this first. I want to add some darker hair. Add some fun. Go in and work on. So now I want to enlarge that brush a little bit. Get some deeper strokes. And this is really showing the quality of the uh, pressure. So let's come in here for fun just add some of those deeper strokes of her hair. Lighter touch, stronger touch. We're getting that done. Then I might want to add a solid layer of color now. Just control delete. We'll add that white in there to the background or command delete and uh, we can keep working with this. Remember that uh, because this application of Photoshop will let you simulate paint brushes, you can create brushes that look like watercolor. Um, I was working on a project earlier today. Let me open that. This is it. And I had created some art uh, in traditional watercolor, scanned it in so I could use it as a template. And then I began manipulating that art in Photoshop. Uh, I wanted it to look a lot like this original here. And so I've been having fun with this tablet. And to break it down, I've been just adding layers of color and using a watercolor type brush on the monitor tablet to get those soft effects so uh, a nice outline was drawn in to give me a foundation to kind of build onto um, then I started adding different color here a blue sky background remember this was the original so I'm kind of mirroring it and it's a lot softer on here so another thing I could do is with this monitor uh, tablet I could change the texture of the paper that's like the watercolor paper so again I'm bringing getting a little bit more of a jitter as I draw with that now the pen pressure is going to be different on this brush see how it's angling in and out these brushes are very unique in uh, photoshop they're going to give you a 
real bonus of a watercolor fill and uh, you'll get a little preview right up here in the area to show you how the brushes the specific hairs of the brush are coming down so you can kind of get that feel when you look at it brush and do something a little heavier and the more I get pressure you're gonna see how interesting this brush is when I move it around and scroll it around and that's all because of these settings here and this type of setting here so lots of brushes to work with here's a real soft one uh, here's charcoal so that's going to give the illusion I probably would want to bring my flow and my opacity up and simulate that charcoal that's really fun it looks like a square uh, piece of charcoal that I'm drawing with I might want to go over to shape dynamics on this see if I can add it can't change too much on that I can make it more of an airbrush charcoal some of these brushes are limited on their pressure just kind of have to work with the brush I can do jitter pressure so let me clear up this so you can see that a little bit better very easy step backwards so there we go now pressure now I'm working into real soft this is actually a very fun brush I haven't used this one very often let's go to a real bold large shape and see what happens very interesting with the pressure as you can see I hope that's showing up okay really interesting brush charcoal um, there's some really sophisticated ones um, we have one called scattered leaves and again look at the pressure on that I'm going to use this one to add to that illustration I'm working on right now and so if I get in there to an actually a little bit normal color you can get that feeling of scattered leaves it's so great um, they've also got maple leaves which are fun so the larger the brush the larger the scatter and size of those so right there on your scattering you want to turn that pressure on whoops I keep hitting tilt again I'm still learning how to manipulate and so if I hold down it scatters a certain way it's interesting like some texture of wood let's say I've got a piece of wood here like that tree and I start working with that oil pastel texture and I can sketch just like I do on a piece of paper start manipulating and I might want to go a little bit larger and get some of that texture in so I'm mirroring what's going on in this shape dynamics again they really want to keep they want us to have 25% more control without that minimum roundness up so high so now see how I'm getting that wonderful look of wood thank you for joining me